Hi everyone. I wanted to build a Ploopy Classic Trackball and noticed that there were no full video guides for it, so decided to make one. First of all, I'll go through all of the parts that it came with. Seems like some parts change from time to time. The website says it includes countersunk machine screws and threaded inserts, and mine included these screws, which uh, appear to be screwed directly into the plastic. Less reusable, but I think as long as I'm careful, I should be able to open and close it up as often as I would like to. Anyway, I'll just go through the list on the ploopy.co website. So first is the top. There was a little bit of support um, left over inside of it, but it was very easy to take out with my fingers. Didn't need any tools to pry out. Very simple. Next is the three roller bearing dowels. Um, they're very small. Just show you one of them there, but there are three. The scroll wheel right here. Uh, this is the scroll wheel holder. And this is the scroll wheel holder holder. Very, very good terminology. The primary buttons. There was one set of primary buttons included. PCB anchor, which I believe is this little guy. There's the base, which, uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. This is revision D, most current, late April 2022. And two sets of secondary buttons. I think maybe that has to do with some printing reason. There's also this jig which is included. It's not in the list, but it is necessary to line up the two PCBs. Electronics, PCB programmed and fully tested. So that's the PMW 3360 and optic. It appears as though they're now soldering it all prior to sending it out. I know that the instructions in GitHub mention that you need to solder it on, but it came that way. There's the little smashed legs of the optic plastic coming through. So that's just to keep it in place. Slightly less soldering for me to do. There's also this other PCB, a USB A to B cable. It's white, which is not ideal considering the mouse is black but I assume it has something to do with supplier availability. Hardware does come with six regular screws meant to go straight into the plastic. Three roller bearings. Here's the little guys. Two three millimeter by 18 millimeter metal dowels. One silicone ring. Four friction pads. Snooker ball. There's a few little scuffs on it. It's kind of tough to see, but I don't think that will affect anything in any significant way. So let's cross our fingers. Also, there is a bearing press jig, which is not listed, but it is necessary for getting those bearings onto the little baby dowels. A couple of tools you need, Phillips head screwdriver, soldering iron, solder as well, kind of necessary for soldering. It has lead in it, so that sucks, but works a lot better. Also, I got one of these wedges and uh, I noticed it attaches here, but just seems to kind of spin, so I'm not really sure that's intended or not, or if it's meant to be a little more stationary than that. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so as I mentioned before, the uh, PCB already had the PMW3360 soldered on, optic connected. I kind of just skip a bunch of steps in GitHub. So I'm all the way at step nine. Attach the PCB anchor to the base PCB. Looks like it goes on like this. It's a little A here. Attach the vertical PCB to the PCB anchor. Just sort of slots in there to hold it laterally. It does not stay super well. Insert the PCBs into the electronics assembly jig. Okay, there we go. So just to make sure those holes are in, oh, and the other ones, I guess also have to be in. Goes in a little further. Oh. Yeah, I really get it in there. So right at the edge, make sure the electronics assembly is seated fully in the assembly jig. There you go. Reading. This step is crucial. Misalignment during this stage will virtually guarantee all the buttons will not function. So all of these pads are lining up, you can see. Set the soldering iron's temperature to much higher than normal. Okay, I've set it to, I guess, much higher. I think it did the trick. Uh, it's not pretty, but yeah, I set the... I had to actually reduce the temperature a little bit. I brought it back down to 390 Celsius. Remove the completed electronics assembly from the assembly jig. Let's see how simple this is. I'm gonna grab it by its little shoulders here. This may require a bit of force. The electronics assembly is fairly strong, but don't impart unnecessary force onto the assembly. Okay, so yeah, took a little bit of pulling, but 
think it's good. I just leave this. Remove support material from 3D printed parts. I did that. Okay, he has a video on removing support material. I will try to link to that video. Prepare the scroll wheel holder. Insert scroll wheel holder into scroll wheel holder holder. Gently, gently, gently. There. Okay. So it's in there, it's spinning a little roughly, but it's spinning. Insert scroll wheel holder holder into electronics assembly. It goes this way. I'm going to push it in. Press the plastic on its edges, not in the middle. I've pushed it in. That clicks. That spins. Well, it looks, looks pretty darn flush here. Okay, so next step 18, assembling the base. Place electronics assembly onto base. There's a nice hole here. Okay, just the wrong angle slightly. So it's got a tiny bit of play, but not much. Screw the secondary buttons into the base. It's a nice square, so it's quite obvious. Oh, also, now is a good time for me to reference step zero, all the way back at the top. Note on driving screws. The screws are driven into plastic. Plastic is soft. Go slowly, go gently. When you feel significant resistance, stop. Tiny bit of play there too, not much. I'm gonna kind of hold the buttons so they don't twist too far out. Gently twist the secondary buttons counterclockwise. There, all right, I think that's nice. When it's screwed in, it looks like that, which I think is where it's meant to be. Step 21, fit the hole in the top for the scroll wheel. So I've got one of these dowel pins. I'll be inserting it into this hole. Wiggle the metal pin in the hole to loosen it. A consistent fit when the top is attached to the trackball in later steps. Step 22, prepare the scroll wheel. Insert dowels into scroll wheel. A hammer. Oh boy, I don't have one of those handy. But let's see, test my might. Yeah, they have a little tab on the inside that stops it. That is what the scroll wheel looks like. If you'll notice, this side is uh, shorter than this one sticking out. Insert scroll wheel into base. The short part sticks up. I think I'm just gonna push this down ever so slightly. Gentle, gentle. There. Okay, so that slid in pretty easily. It's rolling, and of course it's challenging to get this back in. There we go. Screw primary buttons into base. Right here. Twist the primary buttons clockwise. That's enough. So next step is the bearing press jig. One bearing goes inside of here. Just plop it in there. A little dowel goes into the other side here. Press the halves together. So the dowels, at least in my kit and presumably in all the kits, are not perfectly cylindrical. Okay, it just snapped together. And I don't think that matters. I think it's just a matter of being friction fit into there. So there's the uh, plastic dowel inside. Repeat two more times. Insert roller bearings into top. Ensure the bearings are pressed all the way into the case. If they're not, there's a good chance the ball will become badly scratched. Push that in. Just barely poking out here. Fairly flush. Let's try the other ones. So that one's not going in very well. I'm gonna try just pushing with a screwdriver. Okay, so pushing with the screwdriver on the uh, side that wasn't quite going in worked well for me. That one, this one feels like it's sticking out more still. That needed a lot of force. Put the top onto the base. Align the USB connector, and there's that pin inside here that needs to be aligning as well. I'm sort of Pulling it this way. Okay, I think I just did it there. This rolls, this clicks, click, 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 click. Hmm, that's kind of sticking. I think I need to turn it a little bit more clockwise. All right, I'm gonna try and take the lid off without breaking everything. A little adjustment. That's a bit better. That's, everything seems to be clicking a little better now. Insert the screws, apply the friction pads.
Yeah, I think that feels pretty good. Okay, step 34. Insert the ball. Depending on slight variation sizes, you may need to push the ball in with some force, but it shouldn't require a large amount of force. Do I need to push it in? I don't think so. I think it just splunks right in there. Verify the ploopy trackball is working correctly. Step 35. I'm going to use the uh, USB that was included in the kit. Oh yeah, and uh, <laughs> keep in mind when you flip your mouse upside down, there's a ball that will suddenly fall out now. Now let's see. Mouse cursor moves around fine. Uh, I can scroll up and down. And my goodness, is the sensitivity high. By default, forward, backward. Obviously move the ball. This scrolls. Right click, left click. This is essentially like a normal mouse if you put your fingers there and this is just some bonus buttons i think i'm going to change it up a little myself okay so that's the bloopy if you have any questions feel free to throw them in the comments i had fun making it um, i was slightly disappointed i didn't get to solder in the entire motion sensor but to be honest i've read a few people online putting it in upside down because apparently that's very easy to do and uh then that's just sort of ruined. So I think it's a good choice on part of the uh, creator, Crop Octagon, on Reddit to just solder it himself. Anyway, go have fun ploopying, everyone. Hope you enjoyed it.